Before the rise of the Tyrannosaurus, the Carnosaurs ranged as the ruling dinosaurs across the Earth. From the Americas to Afro-Eurasia, these massive animals were the apex predators of their time. However, towards the end of the early Cretaceous, this storied lineage of dinosaurs, starting all the way back at the Jurassic, began to die out. But before their ultimate demise, one massive Carnosaur ruled over the North American continent. Being known from Texas and Oklahoma all the way up to Maryland, this dinosaur was the last great Carnosaur predator of North America, and one of the last macro predatory dinosaurs to rule over North America before the arrival of mighty Tyrannosaurs. This was Acrocanthosaurus, the terror of the West. The first fossils for Acrocanthosaurus were discovered in the early 1940s. Two specimens, OMNH-10146 and OMNH-10147, which consist of two partial skeletons in the back of the skull, were found in the Aptine Age early Cretaceous rocks of the Antlers Formation, located in the state of Oklahoma. These two specimens would later be described as the holotype and paratype for a new genus of large theropod dinosaur in a 1947 master's thesis published by American paleontologists J. Willis Duvall and Wayne Langston Jr. Langston proposed a name for the new theropod as Acrocanthus atokaensis, meaning high spine from Atoka, named after the county it was discovered in. However, the name was changed for its formal publication in 1950 as Acrocanthosaurus atokensis meaning high-spined reptile from Atoka. Several decades after its discovery and publication, more well-complete specimens of revolutionary finds would be made, the third specimen to be described, named SMU-74646, being known from a more complete skeleton with skull fragments, was discovered in the Twin Mountains formation in the state of Texas in 1990, and was published eight years later. The most revolutionary find would be announced to the public very recently. In 1982, Remains of a large Acrocanthosaurus specimen were discovered once again in the Antlers Formation, named NCSM-14345, later being nicknamed Fran. It was a revolutionary find for not only being the largest Acrocanthosaurus specimen ever found, but it was the first Carcharodontosaur for its time to preserve a complete skull. However, unlike SMU-74646, it wasn't known by too many postcranial remains. This remarkable specimen wasn't published and described until the year 2000. In 2008, the partial skeleton of a juvenile individual was discovered in the Bighorn Basin bone bed of the Cloverleaf Formation, located in the state of Wyoming, named UN2796. Its publication in 2012 provided the first ever evidence for this genus to inhabit northern regions as well. Potential remains have also been found in the famous Cedar Mountain Formation in Utah. However, they may represent a different Carcharodontosaurid altogether and are therefore left uncertain. Recently in the 2024 publication, potential remains of a young Acrocanthosaurus individual were discovered in the Arundel Formation in the state of Maryland. Despite being known by fragmentary bones, USNM 466054 is not only known by enough material to determine it as a young Acrocanthosaurus specimen, but it also provides important information to the range for this animal as it is its first specimen to be recovered from the eastern United States. This indicates that Acrocanthosaurus likely had a continent-wide range thanks to Wyoming and Maryland material. Acrocanthosaurus was one of the largest carnosaurs known from North America. 
Thanks to the discovery of Fran, the size of its skull and postcranial remains helped paleontologists discover the true size for this massive theropod. As it reached a body length of 11 to 11.5 meters, or 36 to 38 feet, with a skull length of 4 to 4.2 feet, while estimated to weigh at 4.4 to 6.6 .6 metric tons based on various measuring techniques. While not as large as other Carcharodontosaurus, such as Giganotosaurus, it would have rivaled Mapusaurus in body length. That being said, Acrocanthosaurus was still large enough of a predator to tackle large prey items in all different shapes and sizes. <laughs> As mentioned earlier, Acrocanthosaurus belongs to the infraorder of dinosaurs known as Carnosaurs, a grouping of predatory dinosaurs that lived predominantly during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. Originally thought to contain a smorgasbord of large theropods, but has since been thinned out to include only Allosaurus and Kin. However, with the description of Asphaltivator Vialidati, a basal allosauroid that exhibits both basal and derived traits, in 2019, the group has expanded to include Megalosauroidea, though it is debated. Acrocanthosaurus is a member of Carcharodontosauridae, the most derived family of Carnosauria that first appeared at the end of the Jurassic and extended far into the Cretaceous. The family is most identifiable by massive sizes that later members will go on to achieve, and the serrated, shark-like teeth that give the family their name. Acrocanthosaurus was among one of the earlier representatives of Carcharodontosauridae, and a phylogenetic tree, Acrocanthosaurus is considered less derived from its other relatives in the clade, Carcharodontosaurinae, from which the more well-known genres such as Carcharodontosaurus, Giganotosaurus, Mapusaurus, and Tyranotitan belong to. Yet it was more derived than earlier genres such as Eocarcaria, Concavenator, and Lajas Venator. This places Acrocanthosaurus in a relatively central position on the Carcharodontosaur family tree, though its exact placement remains unclear. Back in 2001, however, paleontologists attempted to group Acrocanthosaurus into its own unique family called Acrocanthosauridae. Acrocanthosaurus is known to have thrived across the United States at the apex predator of the North American continent during a late Aptian to the early Albion stages of the early Cretaceous period. Being known from the American Midwest to the East Coast, Acrocanthosaurus is believed to have thrived in redwood environments and coastal floodplains that connected to the recently formed Western Interior Seaway, which during this time hasn't split the North American continent yet, hence the wide geographic range. Flora would have consisted of conifers such as a now extant redwood tree, sequoia, and the extinct glenrosa, various different species of ferns, horsetails, and other vascular plants, in addition to the early flowering plants and cycads. Considering how far out of a range Acrocanthosaurus is known for having, this high-spined reptile coexisted with various fauna, with some being fish like Ceratodus and Hybotus, amphibians like Alba Nerpeton, and turtles like Naomi Kellis. As for prey, Acrocanthosaurus hunted a variety of animals in all different shapes and sizes. As juveniles, Acrocanthosaurus would have hunted various small animals such as mammals like Gobiconodon, lizards like Telododon and Atokosaurus, along with other small dinosaurs like the Ornithopod Zephyrosaurus. Once they reached adulthood by around 20 years of age, Acrocanthosaurus would tackle larger prey, which consists of other reptiles like the Neosuchians, Tarsimordio and Pachycalosuchus, and pterosaurs like the Radiodactylus, and other ornithochirids of indeterminate origin. As for dinosaurs, Acrocanthosaurus hunted a variety of different prey items such as other theropods like Archansaurus and Microvenator, Ornithischians like Tenontosaurus, Preconodon, and potentially Borealopelta, and most importantly, various sauropods like Brontomeris, Venemosaurus, Rugocadia, Astrodon, and lastly, Sauroposeidon, one of the tallest animals to have ever walked the planet. The fossil record provides major evidence of Acrocanthosaurus actively hunting and scavenging on Sorbicidon, as the young cloverleaf specimen was found near a Sorbicidon scapula. In addition, dinosaur tracks from the Paluxy River, found within the Glenrone Formation in Texas, likely belonged to an Acrocanthosaurus chasing after what was probably a Sorbicidon. With a bite force of 2.5 metric tons, Acrocanthosaurus used its long and sharp serrated teeth to easily tear through flesh like knives, severely wounding their prey and causing major blood loss. Aside from prey, Acrocanthosaurus has so far been known to have little competition. A close but minimal contender would have been the famous solitary dromaeosaur Deinonychus, which lived during the same time and has always been found in the same formations Acrocanthosaurus was discovered in. However, they could still have served as prey in themselves too. 
especially for adults. The only other competition Acrocanthosaurus had to deal with was its own kind, like other large solitary predators. As evident with Allosaurus, a distant ancestor from the late Jurassic, it's possible that Acrocanthosaurus along with other Carca or Dontosaurus could have potentially cannibalized their own kind if desperate for food. As evident with other Carca or Dontosaurus like Mapusaurus, there's also a chance that Acrocanthosaurus formed temporary hunting groups or social family units in order to tackle down large prey items especially for the massive sauropods that it hunted for food. Since it was described, Acrocanthosaurus has made its fair share of appearances from various documentaries to an assortment of video games, starting on October 31st, 1999, or Halloween, where it made its debut in the game Warpath Jurassic Park. Years later, it would appear in several other Jurassic Park games including Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder in 2001, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis, it then appeared in Jurassic Park Explorer in 2007, and Fossil Fighters in 2008, as well as its sequel game Fossil Fighters Champions in 2010. From the 2010s to the 2020s, it would appear in Jurassic Park Builder, Jurassic World The Game, Primal Carnage Extinction, The Isle, Beast of Bermuda, Jurassic World Alive, the Jurassic World Evolution games 1 and 2, Prehistoric Kingdom, and Jurassic World Primal Ops. Acrocanthosaurus' first on-screen appearance was in a 1999 documentary film titled Dinosaur Attack, which focuses on the discovery of the Paluxy River tracks. It was then featured in the 2007 anime Dinosaur King, having two episodes dedicated to it. In the same year, an Acrocanthosaurus family made an appearance in the Land Before Time animated series in the episode titled A Lonely Journey. Then, in 2009, Acrocanthosaurus would have its own dedicated episode on monsters resurrected or mega beasts, after which it would appear more frequently in documentaries, having its next appearance in the 2010 series Prehistoric being featured in episodes covering Dallas and Washington, D.C. Its next two appearances were in the 2014 South Korean documentary series Adventures of Ceratops, along with a re-edit of Dinosaur Revolution called Dinotasia in the same year. Its last film or show appearance was in the documentary series Nature of Things, specifically in the episode Dinosaur Cold Case, which aired in 2020. In this documentary, Acrocanthosaurus is speculated to be the likely predator that may have spooked the well-preserved Borella pelta specimen that drowned during a major flood. Acrocanthosaurus was an extremely unique predator. With its bizarre high spines and its continent-wide range, it serves as not only the first definitive Carcharodontosaur to ever be found on the North American continent, but it's also the predator known to have hunted one of the tallest animals to ever walk the planet. However, 110 million years ago during the early Albion Age, Acrocanthosaurus went extinct unexpectedly, just 3 million years after it first appeared in the fossil record. While the extinction of Acrocanthosaurus has never been discussed in depth, there are two factors that may have contributed to the extinction of Acrocanthosaurus. Firstly, the western interior seaway formed during a stage at the end of the early Cretaceous. Global warming likely contributed to global sea levels rising intensively, which split the North American continent into two separate continents, flooding the main environments that Acrocanthosaurus inhabited. In addition to this, the large prey it hunted such as Sora Poseidon would have also been affected by these changes. As a result of these two major environmental changes, Acrocanthosaurus was affected the most, contributing to its extinction. Acrocanthosaurus may be gone, but the fossils left behind by this remarkable predator still fascinate us to this very day. With the recent discovery of this animal inhabiting the eastern United States, who knows how many other groundbreaking discoveries will be made in the future for the remarkable high-spined reptile, Acrocanthosaurus, the terror of the West. Thank you for watching our video on the Western High Spine Terror, Acrocanthosaurus. We hope you've enjoyed this video as much as we did while making it. Acrocanthosaurus was a truly awe-inspiring predator that no one would have wanted to encounter in its day. And this impressive creature deserves as much love as it can get. This video was directed and narrated by myself, the Crimson Acro, scripted by Spine and Dragon, the Primal Earth, Rango Gamer, Straight Up Murph, and myself. 
edited by the Dinosaur Hunter, Legit Eliminator, Mike MC9797, myself, the Spider Dragon, and the Primal Earth. The graphic designers for this video were the Dinosaur Hunter and Mephilus, and the researchers are Spider Dragon, Straight Up Murph, Rango Gamer, and myself. And as always, see you all next time on Epoch Now.